Last week, I gave a teaser for a more in-depth flow video that included a little bit of machine time. Well, I'm back and happy to say that I was able to run a three-axis mouse on the Daytron Neo and a five-axis mouse on the Matsura MX330 with the help of CJ Abraham and Angelo Juris from the Fusion Cam product management team. Let's start with the three-axis part. This mouse was fully modeled in the sculpt environment of Fusion 360 by industrial design guru Michael Sagan, so all the curves are G2 continuous, just like Flow prefers. The curvature continuous surfaces are what allow Flow to go smoothly from one surface to the next. I'll skip the creation of the adaptive clearing operations and get right to the good stuff. Just like I reviewed last week, the Flow toolpath is in the multi-axis section of the toolbar or context menu. I'll choose a ball end mill, and then in the geometry tab, choose the surfaces I want to machine. To make sure the end result is a smooth toolpath, I'll toggle the arrows until they're pointing in the same direction. This is a fairly wide face, so I'll increase the number of stepovers to 200. Tangential fragment extension will extend the toolpath in the direction of the arrows by the entered amount. I'll also change the direction to one way, to generate cut passes that use climb milling for better cut conditions and a better surface finish. Finally, I'll make the retract move shortest path, which will calculate a safe 3D path between cutting moves. I'll repeat these steps to create toolpath for the surfaces just beside the top faces. Now that the top toolpath is generated, I can see how the passes extend beyond the selected surface. Now I'll apply some flow to these side faces. One trick with flow is to select all the surfaces, and if the majority have the vector arrow facing the wrong way, just go to the passes tab and toggle the isometric direction. Changing from along U to along V will rotate all the arrows 90 degrees at once and can save some time versus clicking on each individual arrow. Another thing to remember is shaft and holder, which will automatically detect the distance from the tool shaft and holder to the model and adjust the tool path to keep the tool away by the set clearance value. Now as I run the stock simulation, the actual footage of the part running in the machine will play alongside it. The simulation might not align exactly with the machine footage because I manually adjusted the machine feed as it was running from time to time. Some things I want to point out are the initial top flow, where the cuts are all climb milling, and the shortest path move uses that safe 3D path to get right to the start of the cut. There are also some tight clearances on the sides, and the tool actually starts to retract about halfway through. That's stock and holder at work, keeping the tool away from the part and avoiding collisions. In the images of the final part, the surface finish definitely looks good. However, there's a small section on the top of the part where the surface finish looks really dull and lackluster compared to the rest. That's where the ball end mill was cutting with the tip of the tool, and thus with a low, or technically zero, surface speed. We'll take a look at how to fix that with multi-axis on the next iteration of this part. Now we're gonna use multi-axis flow and cut this part on the Matsura MX330 at Pier 9. First, I'll create essentially the same flow toolpath on the top surface of the mouse, but this time I'll enable multi-axis. I'm not going to add any forward or side tilt just yet, and I'll keep the maximum tilt at 180 degrees, giving the tool full freedom to tilt. In the simulation, I can see from the show axes and from the orientation of the tool that the tool stays normal to the surface by default. This means that the ball end mill would cut with the tip of the tool for the entire cut, which won't help the surface finish or cut conditions. To fix this, I'll go back and add a side tilt of 25 degrees. I'll also limit the tilt with a max tilt of 45 degrees. One way to picture how this will affect the toolpath is that the tool tilt is constrained to a cone of that angle. Now the tool is tilted sideways and the cut is happening up the side of the tool 
rather than right on the tip. I'll use the same principles to create toolpaths for the rest of the mouse. As I go through creating these toolpaths, I'm adding side or forward tilt to keep the cut off the tip of the ball end mill, and entering a max tilt angle to keep the tool from colliding with the vise or the stock. Now let's take a look at some of the footage from inside the machine while it was cutting the mouse using the simultaneous five axis flow toolpath. The motion along the top surface is nice and smooth, and there's no dull band like we saw on the three axis part because the tool doesn't cut using the tip. The flow toolpath on the sides of the mouse wraps all the way around the mouse and still keeps the cut off the tip of the tool. With this closer look at flow, I hope you give it a try and I look forward to seeing what you make.